In a previous video, we found the general solution of the simple harmonic oscillator, and I'll just post a link to that video real quick. And just to give a 10 second summary, what we did is write down Newton's second law. We then realized the force on this thing was given by Hooke's law. Plug in the fact that the acceleration is the second time derivative of position, and we arrive at a second order differential equation. Then we talked about how we go about guessing the solution, and the general solution turned out to be this. That general solution is the sum of two periodic functions that have the same period. That period happens to be 2 pi divided by root k over m. The goal of this video is to transform the appearance of this general solution into a form that is often more useful than having a sine added to a cosine. So there's a useful fact that if I have a sum of two sinusoidal functions that have the same period, they can always be combined into a single sinusoidal function provided I give myself the flexibility of having a phase shift. So this is what I'm claiming. I can always put this linear combination of sine and cosine together into a single sinusoidal function, and I chose a cosine for this, that has the same period, but will end up with some phase shift. And that phase shift just basically changes the starting point for the wiggle. Now how can we show that this is actually going to work? What I do is I expand the right hand side using the cosine of a sum of two angles formula. And then I'm going to reorganize the right hand side to get the coefficients of the cosine and sine pieces. And for this equation to be true, the coefficient of cosine omega t has to be the same on the left and right hand side and the same for the sine function. And my goal here is to solve for c and phi in order to show that this is possible. The standard way to get c is to add the squares of the two equations, and we're taking advantage of a trig identity. Remember cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1, so I'm factoring that out. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. In other words, c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now the standard trick for getting the phase angle, phi, is to take my second equation and divide by the first, and that gives me a tangent of phi on the right-hand side. So I have b over a equals negative tangent phi. Multiply both sides by negative 1 and invert the tangent function. And my phase angle is the inverse tangent. Of negative b over a. All right, so we aren't going to apply these little formulas just yet. The main point is that I've established this is possible to smash the sine and cosine into a single sinusoidal function. That means the general solution to our harmonic oscillator differential equation could be expressed this way. Again, it'll be a single sinusoidal function having the same coefficient of t, in other words, the same period, plus a phase angle. Any general solution of a second order differential equation has to have two arbitrary constants. And instead of c1 and c2, we now have a and phi. Now there are some advantages to expressing it this way. First off, I can tell immediately what the amplitude is. That's just a. Another advantage is if I look at the velocity function, I just take a time derivative and get negative a root k over m sine root k over mt plus phi. And I can immediately tell what the maximum speed is. It's just the amplitude of this single sine function. And that's a formula you might recognize from your earlier studies. Now a third advantage is that the phase angle form of this general solution allows us to answer some very tricky questions about specifically where this oscillator is at what moments in time. So let's check out an example of that. So in this example, I have an oscillator with mass 200 grams, spring constant 9 newtons per meter. I'm given some initial conditions here, initial position, and velocity. And this is not simple. Now my initial conditions have me away from the equilibrium position and also moving. My goal is to find the position function, and then here's the tricky part. Give me the first three times the oscillator passes through the equilibrium position. So this is a case where it really helps a lot to have your general solution simplified into a single trig function. So we simply start by saying, OK, the general solution of a harmonic oscillator is A cosine 
root k over mt plus 5. The two unknowns here are a and 5. That's why I require two initial conditions. I'm going to go ahead and work in decimal approximations throughout this entire problem. So let's get an approximation of root k over m. Make sure you work in the right units of kilograms there. And I get approximately 6.71 for that. So my position function could be written down as a cosine 6.71t plus 5. Now let's apply our initial conditions, x of 0. When I plug in t equals 0, I get a cosine of 5. And that's equal to 0.1. Now I find the velocity function in general so that I can prepare to apply that initial condition. And when I differentiate x, I get 6.71 because of the chain rule, minus sign because I'm differentiating the cosine function. The a is a spectator here. Sine of 6.71t plus 5. When I evaluate that at t equals 0, I get negative 6.71 a sine 5 and we're told that initial velocity is 0.85 this allows me to solve for a sine phi now the standard tricks for finding a and phi well these ring a bell it's very similar to what we did in the derivation on the previous slide if I take the sum of the squares of these two equations I can factor the a squared out of this and get cosine squared plus sine squared which is just 1 so I have a squared it's equal to the sum of the squares of those two constants. Just square rooting both sides really quick, and I'll just keep working in decimals here. I get 0.162, and that is measured in meters, and it's actually the amplitude of the oscillations. Then how do I get the phase angle? Again, it's a familiar trick. I, I'm going to take this bottom equation and divide by the one up here, and that gives me a, a sine phi over cosine phi or tangent phi on the left-hand side. I'll go ahead and write out the steps real quick. So on the left-hand side, the a's cancel, giving me tangent phi. On the right-hand side, I get negative 1.27. Make sure you are set in radians for this. And I get negative 0.904. Now that I've applied my initial conditions to my general solution, I can write down the position as a function of time. Now I know precisely where this oscillator mass is for all moments in time. If you're interested in the velocity, by the way, you would just take a time derivative of that. So let's get to this tricky question. Give me the first three times the oscillator passes through the equilibrium position. Well, in this phase angle form of the general solution, it's not hard to see where the zeros are. So the cosine function, it's going to be equal to zero for the first time when its argument is equal to pi over two. Then the next time when its argument is 3 pi over 2, and finally when its argument is 5 pi over 2. So that's how we get a handle on this. So there's the argument of the cosine function. When that's equal to pi over 2, the cosine vanishes. I solve for t real quick. And my first approximate time, I'll just round to two sig figs on this, 0.37 seconds. The next time the cosine function vanishes is when its argument is equal to 3 pi over 2. That happens at 0 0.84 seconds. The next time it vanishes, that's when its argument's equal to 5 pi over 2. That happens at t equals 1.3 seconds. So again, the advantage of this phase angle form of the general solution of the simple harmonic oscillator is that I was quickly able to get the amplitude out of it. And by simplifying to a single trig function, it made it possible to figure out the exact moments in time where the position was some desired value, in this case, the equilibrium position. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.